Hey everybody, glad you could join us for a brand new series. As I mentioned last week, we're going to be putting some focus over the next few weeks on questions. You know, each of us have questions and that's okay. That's a, a good thing. Um, being a Christian doesn't mean not having any questions. In fact, it, it, it's probably because you asked questions that you became a Christian. So let's start with this as an introduction. Before we go into a series of questions that you may have about faith or about God, the way he works or the way the world is, let's back up and make sure we understand why this is relevant. What's a, a Christian? Let's start with that question. Well, that's simple enough, right? A Christian is a Christ follower, a person who follows Christ. Christian, Christ follower, that's what that means. Good, good. So how does a person follow Christ if they can't perform miracles? Uh, now, that's a good question. I mean, I, I want to be like Christ, and he's my example, but how am I supposed to do that if I'm imperfect? He's the perfect son of God, and, and I'm imperfect. How, how am I supposed to be a Christian? Well, you say faith. That's the answer, right? Faith, it's essential to Christianity. But not so fast. Do you, we really understand what faith is? That's the question I'd like us to tackle today. What is faith and, and why is it relevant? Some people think that faith is just a, a, a believing uh, that something is that can't be seen. I've heard an old song that says, faith is just believing what God says he will do. But how am I supposed to know if there's a God? And how am I supposed to know that what I'm hearing is what God wants me to hear? Faith isn't as simple as we sometimes think. Faith really isn't blind. Faith, I believe, and I believe the Bible teaches, is a confidence in the things that we can know, but oftentimes don't. It's faith in the moment on what we can be sure of in the big picture. It's, it's being sure that this chair that I'm sitting in right now is going to hold me, even though uh, I couldn't honestly be a million percent sure until I sat in it in the moment. I had faith that it would hold me because it's, it's held me before and it, and it looks like it would hold. And, and all things being added up together, it, it makes sense. That's faith. We become Christians when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, and we don't do that blindly. You know what all this means? All this means that on your Christian journey, you're going to have a ton of questions. And that's okay. It's all right to have questions. In fact, I, I think a person that asks questions is a person that's paying attention. As long as we understand why we're asking the question, Sometimes we ask questions that we don't really want answers to. We ask questions kind of more as um, statements. But more on that later. We won't cover that next week or this week. We'll, we'll probably talk about that uh, next week. For this week, I just want to establish that questions exist. I want you to start thinking about what your questions may be for God and this world, your very existence, the interpretation of the Bible, if we can know for certain that the Bible is God's word, um, did all the things in the Bible really happen? Um, I want you to think about the questions that have been bothering you or, or consuming you. I want you to write those down and I want you to submit them. Now, if you come to youth group on Sunday nights, you'll have a, a different kind of format for this. We're going to break up into small groups and we're going to talk about these things. We're going to submit them. We're going to hash them out, see how many of us share the same basic thoughts. We'll give you an opportunity to submit your questions anonymously. Maybe, maybe you're embarrassed about not knowing something or you feel awkward, out of place. I remember feeling very uh, powerless to ask questions. You see, my dad was a minister at Elliott Baptist Church. I'm second generation, baby. Uh, it isn't because I agreed with everything I heard. In fact, just the opposite. I had so many questions and I was frustrated because I felt as though I I really couldn't ask them without, you know, discrediting my dad and his belief. Or, 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 or maybe I had questions about things that people assumed I already knew. And 
it was too late to ask those questions. No, I want you guys to ask any question as long as you're really looking for an answer. And again, I, I want to affirm that this is good and normal and right, and I can support that through the Bible. Here's what Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, 8 and 9 says. On a side note, again, next week, uh, we're going to dive into this guy, Isaiah, who wrote this. And when you know a little bit about his story, um, you understand why he says this. Lots of times, uh, if you understand a person and their journey, you understand why they're asking a particular question. Anyway, Isaiah says this, God's thoughts are nothing like our thoughts. My ways are far beyond anything you could imagine, says the Lord. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, says the Lord. Of course you're going to have questions. We're trying to understand God here. This isn't simple mathematics. This is quantum whatever. This is big stuff. God's ways are so much further, so much deeper, so much broader than our ways. We're certain to have questions. James chapter 1, 5 through 8 is really the scripture I want us to dive into today. James 1, 5 through 8. It says this, remembering that God's ways are so big, so powerful, so over our head. If you need wisdom, James tells us, ask your generous father. That's God. He'll give it to you. He won't rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Don't waver, for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea. It's blown and it's tossed by the wind. Such people shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they're unstable in everything they do. Do you hear that? If you need wisdom, if you have questions, ask. Ask who? Ask God. He's willing to show those answers to you, but you've got to make sure you have faith in him and him alone. What's faith? Faith is trusting in the moment when you're unsure about the things you can be sure of. I am sure that there is a God. Maybe you aren't. I'm sure that there's a God because of the things I see. I believe all creation needs a creator, no matter what you call him. I don't know of anyone that honestly disagrees with that. Um, if I'm supposed to do homework, or homework needs to be done, that's a better way of saying it, someone has to sit down and do it. It doesn't just do itself. When there was once nothing, now we have something. And, and creation requires a creator. Now, who is God? Um, is he Buddha or, 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 or is he Jesus or is he me? Uh, those are good questions, deeper questions. When I ask a question of God, I need to be sure that God can answer and indeed will answer. I've got to make sure that I look to the miraculous God, for answers that might even be beyond me. That's what James tells us. If I'm asking questions and I'll only accept the answers that make sense to me in the moment, hmm, I've got some problems. Every great discovery was above people at some point in time. Uh, think of complicated mathematics or, or, or astronomy or or language. It all made no sense before it made sense. Are you following me on this? We're temporary and we're small and God's big and great. And if we're going to ask questions over the next few weeks, we have to be willing to admit that we don't have the answers. And when answers come, we have to accept that they may be over our heads temporarily. Faith says, I have reason to believe that that God, who exists because creation needs a creator, 
would want to be known. Well, how do I know that? Um, I think all of creation has a pattern and an organized thought. Uh, I see God's answers in a million small ways, and that helps me when I don't understand his answers in the specific ways. I know this is lofty. I guess more than anything this week, I just want to get you thinking. Thinking about questions and thinking about answers. Again, let me read James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you need wisdom, ask our generous God. He'll give it to you. He won't rebuke you for asking. When you ask him, though, be sure your faith is in God alone. Don't waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as the waves of the sea. They're blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They're unstable in everything they do. Ask. But be sure your faith is in God alone. Can you take time this week and record some questions? You can always email them to me. My email address is pastornathan at comcast.net. P-A-S-T-O-R-N-A-T-H-A-N at comcast.net. Send them to me. I can't tell you that I'll have the answers, but I'll certainly um, dig into the question with you. I might question why you're asking the question, and that's okay. Um, I could show you potential answers. We can go to God for answers. I believe he'll give them. So please put some time and thought into that. Certainly don't use the fact that you have questions to, to unsettle you. There should be nothing unsettling about having questions about God. He's above us and beyond us. It's reasonable that we have questions. So let's ask him together. I hope to see you next week. We can talk about this face-to-face. -face. If not, you just keep joining me here and I'll do my best to connect with you. Love you.